Almighty God will send help to you from heaven. I discovered that I could not see your gate. On that holy communion, I bowed in it. Wine into my hand. I am here tonight. I know, yes, I know, I am serving the God of miracles. I know, yes, I know, what about you? I am serving the God of miracles. stripes we were healed the alpha and the omega the beginning and the ending the world who was at the beginning the world who is still there right now the mover of mountains the cure of the incurable the creative powerful almighty God we bless your holy name. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. Thank you for what you did yesterday. Thank you for the testimonies. Thank you for what you are about to do now. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Tonight, in a very special way, prove your almightiness. Heal every sick person here today. And all those who are listening to us all over the world in the various viewing centers, Father, let your healing power flow out to them. By the time we live here, my Father and my God, let there be no feeble one among us. Thank you, my Father and my God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Well, prophesy to one or two people and tell them, God will restore your health tonight. And then you may please be seated. But tonight we want to talk about the healing virtues. Healing virtues. Uh, our general text for the Congress is in Joel chapter 2, from verse 25 to 27. Joel 2, 25 to 27. The promise of the Almighty God is that I will restore to you the years that the locusts are eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you. 
and my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I'm in the midst of Israel, and that I'm the Lord your God, and on earth, and my people shall never be ashamed. Amen. But tonight, we want to talk specifically on healing virtues or the resurrection of health. And our text will be taken from Mark chapter 5, from verse 25 to 34. Mark 5, 25 to 34. It's the story of a woman that you see in our poster. Uh, the woman with the issue of blood who came from behind and touched the hem of the garment of Jesus. It is, the story goes thus, and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and seest thou who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Somebody's going home whole tonight. Like I told you yesterday, in order that everybody may get maximum benefits from this Congress, our sermon, as brief as it may be, will be broken into two sections. The first section will deal with those who are yet to surrender their life to Jesus so that they can give their life to Jesus. And then the latter part will become available to everybody. We learned yesterday that when sin came, curse came. Now one of the terrible things about a curse is that it is a silent killer. It kills silently, progressively, relentlessly. The moment a curse begins to work, it will be working silently, it will be working progressively, it will be working relentlessly. And the case of this woman is a classical example because nobody heard the sound of the blood that was dripping, flowing ceaselessly through her. No noise. She was walking around. Nobody knew something was going wrong, but death was steadily creeping in. Not all deaths are sudden. And a lot of deaths come quietly, gently, over a period of time. One of the biggest problems, particularly among us Christians, is that majority of Christians are neither sick nor well. If somebody is sick, thoroughly sick, there will be no problem. People will come around and see how they can help. 
But there are people, they are not down, and yet they are not well. A little pain here, another ache there, another little discomfort there, manageable, so they continue with it. But in the name that's above every other name, every form of ache, every form of pain that may be hibernating in your system, we get out today. This woman was steadily losing blood. And Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11, Leviticus 17 verse 11 tells us that the life of the animal is in the blood. So she was losing life steadily. As she was losing blood, she was losing strength. As she was losing strength, she was losing resources. She was spending her money on doctors and no results. She was losing joy. Joel chapter 1 verse 12, Joel 1 verse 12 says, <laughs> When joy with us, trees also with her. When, when somebody's getting weaker and weaker and weaker, it's difficult for that fellow to shout hallelujah. But glory be to God, there is the one who is the source of life. His name is life itself. John 14 verse 6. John 14 verse 6. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And just a contact with him makes all the difference. Somehow this woman knew if only I can be in contact with Jesus Christ. He knew that Jesus was so full of life that part of the life will be flowing through the dress. So he said, if I can just get in contact with Jesus Christ, I know I'll be made whole. I'm praying for everyone here today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ you will have special contact with Jesus tonight. <laughs> but then when we talk about contact with Jesus Christ either we touch him or he touches us the issue of sin comes in again rearing his ugly head you see, because Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 and 2, Isaiah 59, verses 1 and 2, said clearly, The hand of the Lord is not shortened that he cannot see, neither is there heavy that he cannot hear. In other words, there is enough power in the hand of God to heal, to deliver, to set captives free. His ears are wide enough to hear prayers. But he said, your sin, your iniquity, your transgression have separated between you and your God that he won't hear. I've explained to us before that a life wire, a wire that is carrying electricity, if anybody should touch it with naked hand, naked wire, that fellow is gone because there is tremendous power in that wire. But the moment you wrap a piece of rubber around that wire, something we call insulator, a little child can play with that wire. The power will still be flowing inside the wire, but because of the insulator, there's no contact. So the power becomes useless. Even someone who is completely a stranger who has come in here this evening must have felt, ah, God is here. You can see it in the singing 
can see that special anointing that came on the choir oh they are good no doubt about that but if you if you if you are sensitive spiritually you will know it's not the choir singing tonight the only spirit is here the angels were singing along with them you could feel the presence of god the bible says his power is present to heal but as powerful as his presence may be if there is sin in your life that sin will act as a barrier between you and that power that you want to touch oh but many people will say no 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 sir when we are talking about sin you don't want to tell us that my sickness is caused by sin no no i'm, I'm not judging i am not saying at all that all sicknesses and diseases are caused by sin i wouldn't even say that however i know that majority of christians don't even know several things that god calls sin or if they do they don't treat it with the same importance that it should be treated for example many of us don't appreciate the fact that if you are angry with your neighbor if you are bitter against your neighbor and that's because the neighbor offended you you are not angry for nothing the fellow offended you and you refuse to forgive on time and bitterness come oh you've just opened the door to sickness hebrews chapter 12 verse 15 hebrews 12 verse 15 says the root of bitterness springing up in anyone can defile the fellow some of us don't even know that if we come to the lost table for holy communion and there is somebody there's a neighbor there's a brother a sister that have offended us that had offended us that we say we are not going to ever forgive and we still go ahead and partake of the holy communion we get into trouble first corinthians chapter 11 verse 29 to 30 first corinthians 11 29 to 30 he said if you eat the holy communion unworthily not discerning the lost body He said you could even die in the olden days when i say olden days i mean when i was a younger christian if we are going to have holy communion and in those days we had it only once a year during the convention if it is holy communion night you will see brothers and sisters going around making peace settling with those who have offended them you say hey, don't get me to trouble holy communion is coming tonight because the word of god says you read this thing unworthily it may even kill you and of course nowadays some of you take holy communion casually some of you even take it in the morning as if it is the lord breakfast it is the lord supper that's what the bible says we don't we many of us don't count that as sin and there are many of us don't realize the great danger in not being a soul winner we've been born again some of us been born again now for years and we've never won a soul we're in the month of december there are many christians here who have not won a single soul in the whole year you say sir is that a sin oh 
haven't you read John 15 verses 1 and 2 John 15 verses 1 and 2 Jesus Christ said I'm divine my father is the husband man I'm divine you are the branches every branch in me that beareth no fruit he take it away and then you go to verse 6 he said that branch that has been taken away we wither so many of us are sick and we don't know why oh you are sick because God looked down from heaven and said in any case what, what is your usefulness when you are well what are you doing for the kingdom of God what I pray for every one of you here today the grace to restitute your ways receive it in Jesus name so the, the, the issue of sin vis-a-vis -vis sickness is so crucial that in Mark chapter 2 verse 1 to 12 Mark 2 verse 1 to 12 when they brought a man to Jesus Christ who had been paralyzed from neck downwards you remember the story four men brought him there was no room by the door they broke the roof they lowered the young man at the uh, uh, feet of Jesus anybody who know clearly the reason they brought this fellow is so that the fellow can be healed what was the first thing Jesus said son thy sins be forgiven thee before I begin to deal with your sickness let me get your sin out of the way because the hand of the Lord is not shortened that he cannot save neither is he heavy that he cannot hear but your sin can be an isolator and so tonight we will only take the case of those who have not even surrendered their life to Jesus Christ first the, the rest of us you I, I, I'm sure you begin to talk to the almighty God on your own because your sin must go tonight so that the healing power of God might reach out to you so if you are here and you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus you better be here let Jesus wash away your sins with his blood so that your body can become available for his healing touch and those of you who are listening in the various viewing centers as soon as you hear the altar call if you know you haven't surrendered your life you better do so because until sins are gone there will be no contact between that healing power healing virtue of the almighty god so those of you who want to surrender your life to jesus we are going to stop briefly for you so that you can come and give your life to jesus i'm counting now one Two. Three. Those of you who are coming, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Those of you already in front, talk to the Almighty God, ask Him for salvation of your souls, ask Him to please forgive all your sins, ask Him to wash you and make you clean. Promise Him that from now on you will serve Him. Ask Him to be your Lord, ask Him to be your Savior. And please, the rest of us, will you kindly stretch your hands towards these people and intercede for them and pray that the one who saved your soul will save their own souls also pray that the power mighty in the blood we wash away all their sins and give them a brand new beginning let's let's
cry to God for them for just one minute. And if there's anyone still on the way, make sure you get here within one minute so that I can pray for your salvation. Let's pray for them, brethren. Intercede for them that the Almighty God will wash away their sins, that the Almighty God will make every sin in their life washed away so that this very day they will have salvation. Pray for them, brethren. Intercede for them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If there's anyone still coming, you have to hurry up now because I'm about to pray. Make sure you get there before I finish praying. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Savior, we bless your holy name. We bless your holy name because of your promise that whosoever will come unto you, you will no wise cast out. These people have come to you now, Father. Please receive them in Jesus' name. Have mercy on them. Let your blood wash away their sins. Save their souls and write their names in the book of life. And please, Lord God Almighty, any barrier between them and answer to their prayers, put it under your blood. And today, as you are saving their souls, Lord, I pray, any time they call on you from now on, please answer them by fire. And let them serve you to the end. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, those of you in front, I want to rejoice with you. Because from now on, by the grace of God, I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. So if you turn to your left, you see a man there carrying a placard. If you follow him, he will take you to where some pastors are waiting. They will collect the information I need, and then they bring you back very quickly. God bless you. You can begin to go. God bless you as you go. Whenever we clap for Jesus, let's do it very well. Let's do it very well. Come on, put your hands together very well for the Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now the second section is going to be very brief also, because I want you to have a few minutes of intensive prayers. From the story of the woman with the issue of blood, it is clear that restoration is a process. Three basic steps must be taken to get full restoration. Three. Like in the case of this woman, First thing is, you stop the bleeding. If somebody has an accident and is bleeding and they bring the fellow to the hospital, the first thing the doctors will want to do is stop the bleeding. Then the second thing is, deal with that which was causing the bleeding. In the case of somebody who is uh, 
involved in an accident, after they've stopped the bleeding, they stitch the wound, bind up the wound. And then, after they've done the binding, step number three will be where, what do we do now? Do we give this fellow blood transfusion to take care of the loss? or drugs or whatever that would then cause complete restoration back to health. In the case of this woman, the first thing that happened was the bleeding stopped. The leakage, leakage, the leakage was stopped. You don't want to begin to give somebody blood transfusion if the fellow is still bleeding because you'll be wasting the blood. Every leakage in your life is ending tonight. And then the second thing you must do is remove what was causing the leakage to start with remove the plague as in this case in the case of this woman the bleeding stopped Jesus called her and said alright forget the plague we've taken care of that that's step number two. What is it that is causing the leakage? What is causing the leakage? And then number three, Jesus then said, all right, now you can go in peace. Your restoration is complete. As long as there is a pipe C in your finances, as long as there is a hole in your pocket, putting money there is a waste of time. It will just keep on leaking. We must stop the leaking and we must seal the hole. It is only then restoration can become reasonable. A young minister came to us and said, Sir, my church is not growing. I say, is it that people are not coming? He said, no, they are coming and they are going. So, first thing we need to do is pray that the going, when the leakage must end. Two, we must find out what is causing them to leave. Find out what is responsible for the leakage. And then, after we've dealt with what is responsible for the leakage, then we can now pray for more to come. And I'm going to give you some examples very quickly, and they'll be very few, so we can have time to pray. Because when we talk about healing, we are not just talking about physical healing tonight, we are also talking about financial healing, we are also talking about marital healing. We are also talking about spiritual or career healing. Let's take Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 to 11. Malachi 3, verse 8 to 11. That's where the Almighty God said, Because you are robbing him of tithe and offering, you are under a curse. But he said, well, if you now repent, change your mind, and now begin to bring all the tithes and offering to his house, he said, ah, I will do certain things. I will rebuke the voras for your sake, and then open the windows of heaven, pour you a blessing. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 to 11, God is saying, if you are to prosper financially, the first thing we have to do is stop the curse. There's no need blessing somebody who, I mean, pouring blessing into the life of someone is under a curse. The curse will eat it up. 
There's no need giving your money to somebody who is suffering from what the uh, Yoruba elders would call Agbana. He's collecting the money and he doesn't know how the money disappears. You give him money, you are wasting your money. Deal with that Agbana first. Deal with the leakage. And then God said, I, I will deal with the curse. Then I will withdraw the devourers. The devourers will be eating up your income. And then he said, I will now open the windows of heaven and pour a blessing. After we have made sure no more leakage, we have dealt with what is causing the leakage, then the blessing can come. Before I became a Christian, working as a lecturer at the University of Lagos, because I've just come from the village, driving in Lagos was frightening. So I had a driver. The driver was driving me at the beginning of the month, I would pay him his salary. By the middle of the month, I'd be borrowing money from him, from my driver, to buy petrol. Why? Because devourers were walking. If I'm not in the hospital today, my son will be there. If my son is not there, my daughter will be there. One little expense and the other. Before you know it, before the middle of the month, all the money is gone. Then I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And God showed me the need to pay the tithes, I began to do that. All of a sudden, health came. Unwanted visitors stopped coming to my house. The little I have became much. And then God began to open doors. In the name that's above every other name, today, every devourer, devouring your finances, I rebuke. Let me give you a second example. Luke chapter 7, verse 11 to 15. Luke 7, verse 11 to 15. Tells us the story of a widow, the widow of Nain. She was going to bury her only son. Jesus met her on the way and said, Weep not. Wiped away her tears. Put her name. He says, no, no more sorrow, woman, no more sorrow. But then, how can you say no more sorrow? When the only son I have is dead, God said, don't worry, we are going to deal with that. We will deal with the one causing the sorrow. After he dealt with death, and the boy rose up again, then now handed him back to the mother. Full restoration. Three steps. In the name of the one who called me, I want to decree into the life of someone here today, you will never weep again. Because whatever it is that is causing you sorrow, my father will deal with it tonight. Well, let me take one example. Maybe just one more example. Acts chapter 12. Thank you, Father. The Lord said, the fellow concerned will understand. He asked me to tell you, maybe you didn't notice, but the fire in your private part is gone. <laughs> Acts chapter 12, verse 1 to 24. It tells you the story of a king called Herod. This king just hated Christians. So he took James and killed him. And he saw that, ah, the Jews like that. 
So he went and took Peter and wanted to kill Peter too. Put Peter in prison and said, Tomorrow we will kill this fellow. But then in the night, Peter had a divine visitation. And you will have a divine visitation tonight. The yokes of Peter was broken. The prison doors opened. He walked out free. First of all, God stopped the killings. He stopped the killings. And I believe somebody is listening to me right now. In the name that's above every other name, no more premature death in your families. But God didn't stop there. He moved to step number two. A day came, not long after that, Herod was sitting on his throne making a speech. And the people around said, Ah, this is not the voice of a man, this is the voice of God. And God smote him. And worms ate him alive. God stopped killings he uprooted the one who was doing the killing he uprooted the one who was doing the killing I prayed a prayer only last week may sound strong but it is biblical Because tragedy seemed to be striking more than once in a particular family. So I said, Father, whoever is the agent of the devil behind these tragedies, uproot in Jesus' name. <laughs> ah, you remember the story of that young man very well. Been doing very well in his place of work, working very hard, but... At the time when they should promote him, they terminated this appointment. We were still in the old auditorium. And suddenly the word of God came. Now there's somebody here. Someone very close to you is about to die. Don't mourn him. Because he's the ones standing between you and your progress. The following week the father died. The son was recalled in his place of work and promoted. Anyone standing between you and your goal? In the name that's above every other name. That fellow won't see the new year. God stopped the killings he uprooted Herod and then the Bible says in verse 24 he said then the world grew the ministry of Jesus Christ prospered if your sickness is in your ministry the Almighty God will stop the leakage. He will uproot what was causing the leakage. And then He will breathe full restoration into your ministry. Like the story of the young man I told you. After we prayed, and we discovered there were one or two women in the church. Agents of the devil. They don't want, they don't want to leave the church. But whenever they see somebody coming, for one reason or the other, they will antagonize the fellow so that the fellow will go. I say, this is not the kind of case when you pray gentle prayer. Every Monday must move. I didn't hear your amen. amen. Now 
Now, what do you have to do? Because I, I, I want you to pray in a moment. You already know what to pray for about now. We want, to, we want every leakage to cease. We want whatever is causing the leakage to be uprooted. And then we want full restoration. Everything we have lost shall return. This woman, in the case of the issue of blood, had faith in God. She had faith in the God of all flesh. Jeremiah 32, verse 27. Jeremiah 32, verse 27 said, I, I behold, I am the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? I want to encourage every one of you tonight. So please take note of one thing. Whatever God cannot do can never be done. Do you agree with that? And what human beings cannot do is easy with God. Just have that faith. If God can do it, forget it. If human beings say it cannot be done, and that's no problem. As long as I have God on my side, have faith in God. And then this woman said before she left home, if I can just touch the hem of the garment of Jesus, I'll be made whole. Say your own faith, say it out. The Bible says, with heart man believes, with mouth confession is made. Say it out. What do you want me to say, Daddy? Ah, if you can't say, by stripes, I have been healed. If you can't leave here this evening, say, I am well. At least say, I will be well. If your faith is not big enough to say, ah, glory be to God, I'm already well, at least your faith should be big enough to be able to say, I will be well. And then number three, this woman didn't just believe. He didn't, she didn't just believe, she didn't just say it. She acted. She took what we call step of faith. If I can touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made up. And she didn't just sit down at home. She came to touch that hem of garment. Several years ago, when I was in Ilorin at the University of Ilorin, and I just suddenly found myself pain all over my body the pain was horrible now what is this lord what's happening and each time i had that kind of attack I, the question i asked is what have i done wrong because the elder said if there's no crack in the world the lizard will not come in what's what have i done wrong oh lord where have i sinned it was time for bible study I couldn't go. I, the pain was too much. I lay on my bed. And then I decided to put a tape on it. Since I couldn't go to church, let me listen to a tape. And God, who, who knows the end from the beginning, arranged it that as I was playing the tape, the tape that didn't know anything about what's happening to me it was a cassette by one preacher long ago the first thing that came is if you believe that god has healed you what are you doing on your bed ah <laughs> i jumped out of bed got my dress on quickly and drove to the church and when I got to the church, the pastor said, Today we are not going to preach. 
Today we are all going to dance and praise the Lord. Ah. I could hardly sit down. I only came by faith. Now he's saying we are going to dance. Well, you have to obey the fellow who is holding the microphone. So I got up. By pay, I was sitting at the very back. I held on to the pew. And when everybody was dancing, I had to move. I don't want them to look at me as if I'm the one disobeying the pastor. And now I'm telling you, by the time I moved a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left, the pain went back to where it came from. I'm trusting God for somebody here today. You will live here completely whole. But not just that you're going to be healed alone. That's not even my number one goal. Because I know God is going to heal you. I have no doubt about that. If that had been settled a long time ago. But from now on, by the grace of God, you will enjoy health. As you begin to obey God in all things. According to Exodus 15 verse 26. Exodus 15 26. If you will hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God. To observe and to do all that I command you. He said I won't bring sickness near you. That's what he said. That word of God will be fulfilled in your life tonight. As you begin to win souls for him. As you begin to pay your tithes, give your offering cheerfully. As you begin to live holy, sickness in any form, physical, mental, financial, spiritual, and otherwise, will not come near you at all. I've told you, don't let anybody deceive you when they say there's no money in the country. Don't believe that. Did the money just evaporate out of the country? No, the money is where the money is. And when your own restoration comes, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, money will change hands. I'm going to give you just 15 minutes to pray. And tonight, you notice I've not been stopping to asking you to pray. Because I want, you, I want us to do it together. The altar is going to be open. If you want to come to pray there, you are welcome. The prayer points, if you want to write them down very quickly. Number one, you want to praise him. Out of the 15 minutes, make sure you spend at least five minutes praising him. Praise him till he draws near to you. Then number two, you will say, Father, please, in Jesus' name, stop every leakage in my life. Stop every leakage. Physical leakage, financial leakage, marital leakage, spiritual leakage, Stop every leakage in my life. That is number one. Then number two. Father, please in Jesus' name, destroy every blood sucker in my family. Every blood sucker, God knows what that means, and he, he will deal with them. Every blood sucker in my family, deal with them tonight, tonight, tonight. And then number three, Father, please, restore me to full health, physically, Financially, maritally, mentally, spiritually. 
restore me to full health I don't want this not sick not well kind of thing restore me to full health tonight those are the prayer points you have 15 minutes you can come to the altar now and come and let's let's make the 15 minutes intense every leakage must stop tonight everything that is causing the leakage must be uprooted tonight and everything that we have lost health wise spirit wise finance wise full restoration oh lord i want full restoration tonight full restoration of joy full restoration of peace full restoration of power of energy of anointing full restoration tonight stop every leakage deal with every blood sucker in my family uproot them do whatever you want to do just deal with them and then give me full restoration go ahead cry to the almighty god it's you and god now don't don't bother about the fellow next to you if he doesn't want to pray that's his own case you know you need help every leakage lord must stop tonight every blood sucker in my family must go and go tonight and i want full restoration lord full restoration full restoration oh lord full restoration of physical health full restoration of mental health full restoration of financial health full restoration of marital health full restoration of my anointing full restoration in my ministry full restoration lord full restoration of peace and harmony in my home full restoration 